This is a set of NVG-40 night vision binoculars made by AGM Global Vision. These are one of the cheapest models of binocular night vision that you can currently get on the market, and they seem very feature-rich for the price. The NVG-40 is an articulating binocular housing that does have the automatic eye cutoff. When the eyepieces are flipped up, they shut off individually. This is a fairly heavyweight housing. The NVG-40 weighs about 23 ounces. Compare that to a set of DTNVs, which weighs about 18 ounces. A set of RNVGs weighs about 20, as do, I think, BNVDs. It is a rugged, well-made, solid-feeling device. However, I'm not really sure that that weight is an acceptable trade-off. The NVG-40 is powered by either a single CR-123 or a AA battery. It uses a removable insert in the battery cap to switch between the two. I've been using it with AA's and getting plenty of runtime, probably about the 20-ish hours that is typical for most binocular housings. The power switch and the gain control knob are on the front of the device, and in between them is the IR illuminator. The tubes in this housing do not have manual gain, so the gain control knob is just ornamental. It's not hooked up to anything. There are little thumb screws on the sides of the housing that adjust how far in the eyepieces can articulate, which means that it has adjustable interpupillary distance depending on the shape of your face. The NVG-40 comes with two different mount interface pieces that can be swapped on and off the top of the mount using some little screws. One of them is for bayonet interfaces and one of them is for dovetail. I've been using it exclusively with the dovetail interface on a Rhino 2 PYRM dovetail conversion. The downside to non-milspec night vision devices like the NVG-40 is that they often use smaller eyepieces and different glass. For example, I've previously talked about the ATN NVM-14 and the AGM Wolf-14 monoculars. Both are significantly cheaper than a milspec style PVS-14. However, the trade-off is smaller eyepiece lenses and much lower quality glass. The small eyepiece requires you to get the device closer to your face in order to get the same field of view you would get with a PVS-14 or any binocular housing that uses PVS-14 style eyepieces. It can be more annoying to get these set up properly or to use them with eye protection or glasses that requires you to have a little bit more standoff between them and your face. I've had no issues getting these set up properly, however it could greatly depend on the shape of your head, the type of helmet you're using, and the type of mount you're using. I position the NVG-40 just far enough out that I can articulate the eyepieces without having them bump into the helmet. There are other annoying properties of the non-milspec glass, basically the same thing that we saw on the NVM-14 and the Wolf-14. Like with both of those devices, the focus ring has way more throw than it needs. You can spin it way past infinite if you want, and it takes more turns to get things lined up. The focus ring on a real PVS-14 has a very short throw and stops immediately after the infinite point. The other big problem with the glass on the NVG-40 is the same problem that I had with the Wolf-14. Something about the lenses AGM uses in their devices causes a really strange lens flare or hooping effect when you look at any light source. This is not caused by the intensifier tube, it is a property of the lenses themselves. AGM sells another set of binocular night vision called the NVG-50. It is identical in all respects except it uses their 51 degree lenses instead of the typical 40 degree. You can also get those lenses on their PVS-14s. It's a wider 51 degree field of view compared to the typical 40 degrees that you get with almost any other night vision device. From reviews that I've seen online, those have the same lens flare artifacts as the Wolf-14 and the NVG-40. They also introduce some odd fisheye or pincushion distortion that really doesn't seem worth the trade-off. One downside of buying night vision directly from AGM is that you almost always get mystery meat tubes. You don't get to hand select and you get very little information about the minimum specifications of the tubes you're getting. The intensifier tubes in my device are not typical of the ones that you would get if you bought a device directly from AGM. This one has a pair of very old surplus Omni 4 tubes made by, I think, ITT. The Omni 4 standard is just over 20 years old, so these could be from the late 90s or the early 2000s. Despite being that old, the performance is actually pretty good. Omni 4 was the last great leap forward in Generation 3 night vision technology before at least Unfilmed came out. Because they're incredibly old surplus reject tubes, they've got some quirks. The right side tube has an awful halo value, and the left side tube has a terrible auto-gating whine. The tubes are both clean enough and they perform well otherwise, but it's obvious that these problems were significant enough that these tubes got benched for 20 years before somebody saw fit to salvage them into a new housing. So is it worth getting an NVG-40? This housing has a lot of little problems that make it kind of annoying and suboptimal, but then again it's cheap, so you kind of get what you pay for. Is it usable? Absolutely. These are a very affordable way to get a set of articulating binocular NVGs with all the features. 
Whether or not it's worth it probably depends on how badly you want binocular night vision and how unwilling you are to save up a little bit more money. These weigh more than every other binocular night vision set on the market that I know about, and they also weigh a lot more than a PVS-14. The small eyepieces are annoying, and you have to remember that binocular night vision doesn't give you an appreciable difference in field of view versus a monocular. So my recommendation would be to stick with a monocular, because a PVS-14 is way more practical than this. If we ignore the problems of the small eyepieces and the glass quality, these seem like a pretty good trade-off compared to RNVGs. Slightly cheaper, a fair amount heavier, but they do have the articulating eyepieces with the automatic cutoff. However, once you factor in the small eyepieces and the poor glass quality, I think it's really hard to make a case for the NVG40s. Really, it just comes down to price. If we look at the typical cost of these devices compared to other devices on the market, they are not worth it. You just don't save enough money. But who knows, if you find a set for really, really cheap, it might tip the scales back in the favor of the NVG40. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions or if I forgot to cover anything. If you'd like to support this channel, you can via Subscribestar. There's a link in the video description. It may not surprise you that it's very difficult to break even on a review of a multi-thousand dollar night vision device. All right, see you later.